Hello, it's ShadeX, and I discovered a Scooby-Doo movie that piqued my interest. The film is titled Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo, and at first I thought nothing of it. But after seeing the trailer, I grew really interested. The movie is set during Halloween, and it features celebrity guests Bill Nye and Elvira. It is also a crossover with Batman, as the villain of the movie is Jonathan Crane, aka Scarecrow. But what interested me the most is that Maxwell Adams, the creator of Billy and Mandy, wrote and directed this film. This is the second Halloween film Maxwell Adams has written. The first was the Billy and Mandy spinoff film Under Fist Halloween Bash, which is one of my all-time favorite Halloween specials, so I figured that I'd take a look at both films and see how they compare. Initially, I was going to review just the Scooby-Doo movie, but I want this video to stand out more as there are quite a few reviews of this film already. Anyway, without further ado, this is a review of the Halloween movies of Maxwell Adams. Starting things off, Under Fist Halloween Bash is a fun movie. It's about the side characters from Billy and Mandy teaming up and forming a superhero team. I loved this film growing up, and I love this film now. The film starts with Irwin trick-or-treating with Billy and Mandy, but soon they abandon him. This leads to him trying to trick-or-treat on his own. Irwin then runs into the other side characters, who later in the film become his allies. He runs into Hoss, who believes them to be a real vampire. However, Irwin reassures him that it is Halloween. He also witnesses Jeff the Spider and Fred Fred Burger having fun together. Jeff is shooting out blue webs that got that color from blue jelly bean. Fred then tries to spin a web of his own and Irwin looks away. It's pretty clear what happened off screen. Irwin then tries to trick or treat at Mr. Scar's house despite the sign saying there is no candy there. Mr. Scar is angry at Irwin for stepping on his prize winning posies and asks him to stay off his lawn. Mindy then calls Erwin a nerd and it appears the film has ended. However, that was just a gag. She asks him to go trick-or-treating at a house she believes is haunted. Erwin, despite being scared by the Halloween decorations, who he believes are speaking to him, touches the doorknob. This leads to a portal opening up and out of it comes a marshmallow bunny and an army of candy monsters from the underworld. The bunny wants to hunt for people this Halloween since humans hunted for candy in the past. The candy monsters then attack, and Hostel Gatto steps in after one of them steps on a watch his mother gave him. He pretends she is dead and is about to fight the monsters. However, Hoss's mom hears him and says this. You're not pretending I'm dead again because you're 48 and still live with your mommy, are you? No, mommy. He then fights candy monsters, but he quickly gets defeated. After his purple pansies get ruined, Mr. Scar then joins the fight. However, he soon gets defeated as well. Erwin witnesses the chaos unfold, and Mindy gets captured by the Marshmallow Bunny. Jeff and Fred are about to help the defeated heroes, however, the Green Elephant says he wants to spell his name first. After spelling his name, Jeff and Fred scare the monsters away. The team of supporting Billy and Mandy characters then go into Haas's car. Haas says he doesn't drive stick, and Mr. Scar can't either, and Jeff remembers he pretended a stick was a car while playing with Fred. He then says he can drive stick. I found this scene hilarious. Anyway, this is the setup for Underfist. Erwin has a nightmare about his mummy self, and then he wakes up. 
Austin reveals to Erwin that the new president has been kidnapped. Austin and Erwin then plan to go to the portal together with the goal of saving Mindy and the president. Austin chose Erwin, believing him to be human since he doesn't trust the monsters on the team or Scar, who he considers to be a one-eyed weirdo. Soon, Mindy reveals herself to be a witch and puts Haas to sleep with sleep fart gas. Erwin and Haas are captured by her and the candy monsters. Mindy wants revenge since she believes that Erwin Erwin made it her ugly with his mummy cooties that she got after taking his pencil. Haas is then shocked that Erwin is a mummy vampire and is angry that he lied to him twice. He then is put to sleep by the fart gas again. Meanwhile, Fred comes up with the idea of Underfist, which he painted on the bedroom wall of Haas's vehicle. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Haas is tied up and is about to be dunked in hot chocolate. Mindy also tells Erwin that once the candy apple she's holding turns rotten, so will Erwin. Erwin's vampire mummy soul. Afterwards, she breaks into song and creates the trick-or-treater eaters. Erwin saves Haas by transforming into a bat, but he tells the vampire mummy kid to back away. Erwin is about to activate his powers. However, the Underfist vehicle enters the underworld and Erwin gets punched by the fist. Then the two get saved. But before Erwin leaves, he goes to save the president, who is revealed to be Mandy. The members of Underfist then go to the home of the president, who tells them they need to disguise themselves as trick-or-treaters. She tells them to meet with her mad scientists, G and B, who are just Grim and Billy. They give the group costumes, and then Billy gives Haas a candy-destroying blaster. The members of Underfist then prepare for trick-or-treating while Scar double-crosses them by forming an alliance with the bunny. After failing to trick-or-treat, Underfist breaks up temporarily. Erwin soon realizes the caramel apple he was given has an emerald in it and that those are what opened up the dimensions to the underworld. Erwin then comes to save the day along with Jeff and Fred. He activates his mummy vampire powers and aids Haas in battling the trick-or-treater eaters. Also during the battle, a nice musical number with Jeff and Fred happens. One of the highlights of this film has got to be Jeff and Fred's friendship. The two weren't shown together in Billy and Mandy, but I could tell they have been friends for a very long time. I love the subplot about whether or not they should grow up. This arc ends with this song, with Jeff and Fred deciding they don't want to grow up. After the song, Mindy combines all the trick-or-treaters into a giant monster. The monster seems undefeatable until Haas shoots it with the candy blaster, which is revealed to be a rocket launcher with Billy inside of it. He nearly devours the whole candy monster until he jumps out of Billy's mouth and runs away, appearing much smaller in size. After the monster is defeated, the Marshmallow Bunny reveals that him and Mr. Scar are now working together, and he is ready to dump hot chocolate on everyone. The bunny monologues about how he was the reason Mindy became a witch, the monster who haunted Haas as a child, he made Jeff's dad Billy afraid of spiders, and finally cut Fred Fred Burger's tusks off while he was sleeping. Anyway, Mr. Scar kills the bunny by putting him in hot chocolate, and reveals that he was a double agent all along. Underfist gets gold medals and the day seems to be saved. However, some squid demons show up from the hole to the underworld and plan to take over the world. Then this hilarious scene happens. Someone would have to be pretty brave or pretty stupid to try and stop me. Or both! I loved Underfist. It had the potential to be a series of its own. Especially with the joke end credits that shows potential sequels and spin-offs. One thing that surprised me about this movie is how it pulls off a Billy and Mandy spin-off extremely well. I love how the film was able to make Irwin, Haas Delgado, Mr. Scar, Jeff the Spider, and Fred Fred Berger major characters for this movie while Billy, Mandy, and Grimm are now supporting characters with a minor role. Maxwell Adams made this group of side characters from his original show very fleshed out and there was so much potential for two more movies, or multiple seasons. Maxwell wanted this all to happen, but sadly it did not happen. Overall, Underfist is one of my all-time favorite animated Halloween movies. Next up is Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo, which is written and directed by Maxwell Adams. Is it better than Underfist? Let's find out.
While I prefer Underfist, Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo is still a great film featuring the iconic Great Dane. The film was promoted as the first Scooby-Doo film to take place during Halloween. However, according to Scoobypedia, this is not the case as Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King, the Kiss crossover movie, and the Spooky Scarecrow also took place during Halloween. The film takes place entirely during the night of the spooky holiday. The film begins with Elvira on a float at a Halloween parade. Fred is going undercover as a skeleton on her float, and he tracks down the whereabouts of a villain. A pumpkin-headed villain throws pumpkin bombs, which leads to Shaggy and Scooby locking themselves in the mystery machine, while the rest of the gang does the work for them. The start of the film had some great cameos. There's a Frankenstein Jr. float, but more importantly, Red Herring has a cameo in this film. It's brief, but it's still cool to see him again, as he hasn't appeared in any Scooby-Doo films or shows after a pup named Scooby-Doo. Anyway, the villain is revealed to be none other than Scarecrow, a villain from Batman. It's, it is confirmed that Batman and Scooby-Doo share the same universe, which is not at all a surprise, as they have crossed over multiple times. Scarecrow seems to be defeated, however he reveals that he has a backup plan, that being fear gas drones. However, Shaggy uses Scooby as a gun and shoots candy at the drones. I really love how Scarecrow is in this film, I love how Velma calls him the 54th best supervillain. Anyway, Jonathan gets arrested, but not before he tells Velma that they are both caught in the same trap. I knew based on the trailers that Scarecrow likely wouldn't be the main villain of the film, as his identity was revealed right away at the beginning of it. After the Mystery Machine is destroyed, Bill Nye makes the gang a new one, called the Mystery Machine X. When I saw the trailer, I really did not like the design, but thankfully the movie movie addresses this, Fred does not like the new mystery machine at all and misses the old one. The celebrity guests in this movie are cool, it was fun to watch Elvira in this film and her interactions with Daphne were fun to watch. I love Bill Nye in this movie. He plays the role of the tech guy and talks to Fred and Velma through the Mystery Machine X software. I could tell this film was definitely made by Maxwell Adams, especially since he had mutant pumpkins in this film. The pumpkin monsters in this movie remind me of the ones in Billy and Mandy's Jacked Up Halloween. I really like the designs of these creatures, especially the giant one. Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo is a very good Halloween special in that it focuses on the friendship of the mystery gang. At first the gang is angry at Scooby and Shaggy for abandoning them while Scarecrow attacked Crystal Cove, but at the end they work together as a team. Late in the film, Velma confronts Scarecrow who reveals that he is not responsible for the pumpkin monsters. Scarecrow even assists the gang by fighting them. He's very cool in the few scenes he's in. One thing I love about him is that he's canonically an Elvira fan. However, after a moment of being cool, he gets captured by the pumpkin monster. Towards the end of the film, one of my favorite scenes happens where Scooby and Shaggy go into Velma's mind palace after sharing Scooby snacks with her. I love this moment as it shows the three working together to solve the crime. I won't spoil anything else, but this is a solid Maxwell Adams project. Overall, Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo is great. I'm happy that Maxwell was allowed to make this Scooby-Doo film. While I do miss his dark sense of humor, I feel like it would not fit in the Scooby-Doo movie. I'm happy that he avoided that and instead made the decision to make a faithful Scooby-Doo film. It's a lot more faithful than Scoob. I really want to see Maxwell make more Scooby-Doo movies as this was really a fun watch. I really like Maxwell Adams' work. I remember he was working on a puppet show called Dead Meat. But sadly, that project seems to be no longer happening according to its Tumblr. Whatever Maxwell wants to do in the future, I will support. He is very skilled at making horror-themed animated media. Both of these films are great, and I highly recommend that you watch them if you want two pieces of fun animated media to watch this Halloween. This has been Shade X, and I hope you all feel nothing but good vibes.